This tutorial is a set of videos outlining a number of steps to build a full Spring Boot application featuring a Kotlin service backend, a Java client, and a JavaFX user interface. This video will show how to create a Spring Boot JavaFX application so that JavaFX can take advantage of Spring features like dependency injection. For this video, we're going to reuse the client project we created for the previous step and add a new module to it. But we could create this as a new project rather than a new module. The steps would be very similar. Let's create a new module for this project. This is a Spring Boot application, so we select Spring Initializer from the options on the left. We've selected Java 13 as our JDK, but we're not using any recent features, so feel free to use any version from 8 onwards. We enter the group, and we'll call the artifact stock UI. We keep the defaults of a Maven project with Java and JAR packaging, but select Java 11. Let's enter a helpful description for the module. This is our third module, so it helps us to keep clear in our mind what each module is responsible for. We can optionally change the default package. Here, we can select any of the Spring Boot starters we need, but for this module, we don't actually need anything. We can keep the default module name and location. IntelliJ IDEA downloads the created project from Spring Initializer and sets up the IDE correctly. If we're given the option to show the run configurations in services, we can select this. The services window is a slightly nicer and more useful way to see our running services and can help us manage microservice applications. As usual, Spring Boot has generated a default application class for us. We will need to change this in order to launch a JavaFX application. Since this is a JavaFX application and not a web application, we can set the Spring web application type to none. Now let's create our JavaFX application class. We'll call it Chart Application, since later in this tutorial this application will be displaying a line chart that updates itself with stock prices in real time. Since this is our JavaFX application, it needs to extend Application. This is not currently on the class path since we haven't declared it in our dependencies. Pressing Alt and Enter on the red application text gives us the option to add Maven dependency. We want to add OpenJFX JavaFX graphics as a dependency. Here we're using an early access version of 13. If we go to our pom.xml file, we can see IntelliJ IDEA has added this dependency to the file and in the background downloaded the required jar files. We can now import JavaFX application. Application is an abstract class, so we need to implement some methods. We can get IntelliJ IDEA to implement these methods by pressing Alt and Enter, selecting Implement Methods, and choosing the methods to implement. Now we have a JavaFX application, we need to launch it from the Spring Boot application. Instead of using Spring application to run the application, we'll use the JavaFX application class and call launch with a class that is our JavaFX class and the application arguments. The reason we need two separate application classes for our application is because of the way JavaFX uses Java modules. It's beyond the scope of this video to go into the details. Let's go back to our JavaFX application class chart application. We want to be able to make use of Spring functionality like having access to the application context. Let's create a field for application context. This will be a configurable application context. We will look at how to create this in a minute. Our start method, which is a standard JavaFX method, is called with a stage object when the stage is ready to be used. The stage is what we will draw on when we have something to show. We can use the spring pattern of publishing events via the application context to signal when this stage is ready. We'll give the event the stage so that anything listening to that event has access to it. This primary stage parameter was created by IntelliJ IDEA. Let's rename it to stage to make it a little shorter and easier to read. Now we need to create our stage ready event. Let's create it as an inner class in chart application for simplicity. IntelliJ IDEA creates the constructor that takes stage as a parameter. We'll pass this into the super constructor. We can make this inner class static. We don't want the event to be private as other classes will be listening for this event. There are some other useful methods in application that we can override and make use of. Let's override init. This is where we need to initialize our application context. We'll use the Spring Application Builder and give it our Spring Boot application class, which was stock UI application, not this chart application. 
we call run to get the application context. Since we have an init method, we should probably have some sort of teardown or cleanup too. Let's override application stop method. Here, we can close our application context and exit our JavaFX application. Finally, just a bit of cleanup in this class. IntelliJ Idea is telling us these exceptions are not thrown, so we can just go ahead and remove them. Now we have our Spring Boot application class, which launches our JavaFX application. We need something which is going to listen to the stage ready event that we created. Let's create a stage initializer class, which will set up our JavaFX stage when it's ready. This class needs to implement application listener, listening for our stage ready event. This line is a bit long, so let's import the stage ready event to make the code a bit shorter. We need to implement the methods on this interface. Let's get IntelliJ IDEA to do this for us. The IDE has created an on application event method for us, which takes a stage ready event. Let's also annotate this class with component so that Spring can do dependency injection and so on in here. Let's go back to the on application event method. What we want is to get the JavaFX stage from this event so we can do something with the stage. The getStage method doesn't exist yet, so we can get IntelliJ IDEA to create this for us. We want this to return a JavaFX stage. The superclass actually has a method that does what we want, getSource. This returns an object, so let's cast this to stage. We actually know the source is a stage because when we passed our stage constructor parameter into the super constructor, this became the source. Back in the stage initializer class, we can assign the result of this method call to a stage local variable. This stage is ready for us to set up our user interface. We can now run our stock UI application and see it successfully start up as a Spring Boot application. It does also launch a Java process which would show a UI if we'd created one. We can see we've successfully created a JavaFX application which is launched and managed with Spring and allows us to use the convenient features of any Spring application. Thanks for watching.